You're depressed. Yes. How depressed? Nothing. Suicidal? Yes. The shame of being caught? Yes. Yeah. Well, the goods are laid out like that in order to tempt you. You've been tempted beyond endurance, which is exactly what they want. There's no shame in that whatsoever. What supermarket was this? Value buys. Did they call the police? Yes. Do you mind me asking how old you are? 78. It's not you, is it, Mum? No. Are there any shoplifters listening? Here's a woman of 78, almost driven to suicide by Value Buys Supermarket. Get down there. All shoplifters. Calling all shoplifters. Get down yes, to Value Buys Supermarket. Yes. Clean them out. And even if you're not a shoplifter, why not think about becoming one for just one day? Think about it. I'm hanging up. Look at court. I didn't mean How? I just couldn't resist Someone will tell on you. I've been doing it for months now, Mum. What? Well, sooner or later, someone will tell. How old are you? Why? Because that's the way people are. It's only a few hours taxi and that's all. I'm trying to listen to this. You can't be. And claim social security. So, I stop signing on, yeah? Yeah. Don't be ridiculous. He's got nothing to do with you. If he doesn't claim his social, what happens to it? Do you mind? I'm trying to listen to this. It stays down in London. That's what happens to it. It's right, see? It's stealing. Oh, for God's sake, Mother. There's loads of people doing it. Is that Trish? Yeah. His mother. Bloody mother. We've been together three months now, Floyd. Yeah. So. So what? What's the problem? What's wrong? Floyd? You wouldn't like me naked. Why not? You think I'd laugh at you? Not laugh. What do you think I am? Right, sources. Time goes your tip. I'm laughing at it. Yeah, I've got one. Have you heard this one? Yeah. Philip. He gets his uh, nudger cut off by his wife. So he goes to the hospital uh, for a transplant and they offer him this four inch one. And he goes, hey, no good to me, that, you know. All right. All right, Floyd. 
Hello. Not much to No. So uh, they offered him the six-inch one, and he goes, uh, haven't you got any bigger than that? So they show him the 12-inch ones, and he goes, uh, what are you talking about? What do you mean? I came up, you stopped talking. Why? No reason in particular. So he goes, oh, yeah, that's much better. But haven't you got any in white? <laughs> <laughs> better than this. It's brilliant, man. Isn't it? Yes. I'm not gonna hurt you, Catherine. I know you're frightened, but honestly, I'm not gonna hurt you. If you don't struggle, Catherine, if you don't struggle, Catherine, you'll enjoy this. You promise me, Catherine, that you won't struggle, and I promise you that you'll enjoy this. Is that a deal, Catherine? Is that a deal? Put this on. Put this on your head, Catherine. Lie down. Lie down. Okay, Catherine. Catherine. Is Tom good to you? What? Is he good to you? Is he the jealous type? If I was married to you, Catherine. I wouldn't let you out of my sight. When you're in love with a beautiful woman, you watch your eyes. When you're in love with a beautiful woman, you watch your eyes. Everybody wants her. Everybody loves her. Everybody wants to take your woman home. It's good to get the sex out of the way, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry? I said yes. Was it too fast for you, Catherine? Over too soon? No. Is it Catherine? Or Kathy. Catherine. Catherine. Mm. You know, when we lived in caves, Catherine, we were vulnerable during sex. It'd take too long and there'd be a tiger at your throat. Do it quick and you'd live to do it again. Have you ever thought of it like that? No. no. Fancy a swim?
There's been another rape. I bought you some mints. You don't want to be smelling whiskey. Right, right, thanks. And when I get the chance, I'd like to explain. There's nothing to explain. Did the earth move? 8.2 in the Richter scale, and those credits are accurate. There's a possibility that this man has raped twice before. Dr. Fitzgerald's helping us to catch him. But if you'd prefer it, Catherine, he'll wait outside. It's fine. Right. Did he wear a mask? Did he put a hood over your head? Yes. Was there anything else? Sometimes when somebody's raped, things happen. Things that are very difficult to talk about. Was there something like that? He combed my hair. Not here. After he finished, he combed my hair. Has he done that before? Yes. We'd like you to take some tests. Is that okay? What? It's just a precaution. You mean AIDS? There's no evidence he's got it. Were the other two women clear? Yes. After the first tests. Would you like to phone your husband? Um, um... Would you like to tell him in person? I can't. The thing is, he'll need to bring you some more clothes. Because we have to examine what you were wearing. Would you like me to phone him? Be at work. Yes. Why, what's up? I'll kill the bastard. Okay, have you all got your list? <laughs> Bobby! Bobby, just shut up a minute, will you? Right, have you all got your list? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we're inviting all these guys in, okay? Because they're all perverts, and they're perverts with previous, so no one's going to complain if you lean on them a little bit. Understand me? Get off me! If you've got a minute, sir, we'd like you to pop down to the station. I've done nothing. I'll come with you, right? But I've done nothing. I've never been out of the friggin' house. Oh, why you don't bump your head? Get in! Mrs. Malcolm, yeah. it's Floyd, isn't it? What? He's in bed! Yeah. He's done nothing! He was in all night! Which room? Up there! Oh, aren't you safe, He's home? done nothing wrong! My son's done nothing wrong! He's been in there all night! Floyd Malcolm! Floyd Malcolm! Yeah? Yeah. Get to us, will you, lad? Who are you? I'm Michael Aspel. Get your kit on. Kit? Do you know why we brought you in? You think I raped a woman in 1989? Well, didn't you? No. I was sent down for it, eh? But I've never raped no one in my lifetime. So can I go now, please? Where were you last night? Driving the cab. I finished about eight. I went home and I stayed home. My mum, my brother and my sister, three people, right? They'll back that up. Can I go now? Please.
Look, I don't need to rape. <laughs> the old ones are always the best, aren't they? I drive a cab. I pick up women full of booze. I get plenty of offers. I don't need to rape. Please let me go. Okay, come on, you can go. White women get raped by white men. Believe it or not, Jimmy, the big black guy lurking in the alleyway. It's a myth. He's signing on. Yeah, I don't know. We should tell the soul. She drives a cab. Oh, for Christ's sake, Jimmy. Get real. What do you get out of it? I don't touch women. Twelve-year-old boy last time. I just like to look at them. My mother will be worried about me. I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you a few questions about what happened. Did penetration take place? Yes. Vaginal? Yes. Rectal? No. Oral? No. Did he use a condom? What? Some do. No, he didn't. Did he ejaculate? Yes. Thank you. It's so much easier when the victim's educated. I'm just going to take some blood now. You owe it to yourself to help catch this man, Catherine. That man's a threat to us all. You know it all by heart, don't you? I do, yes. I'm sorry. Mr. Carter? Yeah? Talk to Fitzgerald. So, he combs your hair to get rid of strands of his own. He dragged you into the pool to destroy traces of his semen. This guy knows police procedure inside out. He's done it before and he's been caught. He's learned the hard way to destroy all the evidence he can. He's done it before? Twice before. This is the third time. And what are you playing at, for God's sake, eh? He's raped three times. Tom, he's got a record and you still can't her. catch Losing him. Losing your head isn't going to If help. it was your wife who'd catch him, I'm bloody sure of that. Excuse me. You say he used your name? Yeah. Can I come in? What about Fidel? His name's Peter. Oh, the Peter? Yes. Please let me come in and explain. Okay. What do you want me to say to him? I've met a middle-aged, married man, slept with him a couple of times while his wife was away. So I'm sorry, Peter. Four years of friendships down the swanee. Did you sleep with him? No, ignore that. No, sorry. Sorry, that came from down here. Engage the brain. Is your body plan handled to do with exactly as you wish? What right have I got to ask a question like that? If Judith came back, I might well do exactly the same thing. No, sorry, it's not working. The grid eyed monster's growling. Ignore the sudding brain. Did you sleep with that man? That's my business. So you did sleep with him? If that's what you want to think, fine. Three straight A's, no doubt. Why not? He's young, fit. He had four years practice, but for God's sake, Panhandle, did it have to be somebody so bloody perfect? I mean, couldn't he have had just a hint of a pot belly or something? He spoke to me, Fidel. He didn't utter one intelligible word, but he spoke to me. He said, you're a dirty old man, Fitz. The grave beckoning, trying to get your hands one last time on some firm young flesh. I know that's not true. Can I stay? 
Well, I need for effort, no doubt. So, so. Thanks. You're welcome. What did you come for? Sorry. Oldest, youngest. Smack bang in the middle. You resent that? Yes. The middle child neglected, yes. Yes. Your two older brothers bully you, the two younger ones. James Malloy. Yes. DS Beck, DC Harriman. You're a caretaker here, Mr. Malloy. Uh, no, I'm a cleaner. You've had four previous convictions for indecent assault. And last night, in this building where you work, Mr. Malloy, a woman was raped. Now, is that just coincidence? Yes. He didn't do it. Would you like to come down to the station, please, Mr. Malloy? I'm not going anywhere. So where were you last night? At home. No, you weren't. We knocked on your door and got no answer. I was in all night, watching telly. What did you watch? Do you have a girlfriend, James? Would you answer my questions, please, Mr. Malloy? What did you watch? EastEnders. It wasn't on. Have you ever had a girlfriend, James? No. Uh, I meant Coronation Street. Yeah, and after that? I went out. You said you stayed in all night? Well, till about nine o'clock. Well, that's hardly all night. Where did you go? The, the pub. Which one? The Admiral. The man we're looking for forms a relationship with these victims. Is that your local, Mr. Moore? Yes. You're well known there. Force control. Yes. So control they'll back this up. James Malloy. Anybody home? The so they'll back this up, Mr. Malloy. I don't know. James Malloy? Yeah. The cleaner? That's right. I thought it was someone younger. Why? What? Why did you think it was someone younger? I just did. What led you to him? He's just answered a few questions, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but why? Why is he answering a few questions? What led you to him? I can't tell you that. He's done it before. I can't tell you that. He has, hasn't he? Eh? Could it have been Malloy? I, I don't know. He wore a mask. Yep, yeah, but, but he spoke, though, didn't he? Yeah, but I, I didn't see him. But could it have been his voice? Could it have been Malloy's voice? Yeah, well, yeah, it could have been. This guy talks to his victims. He talks incessantly. He tries to form a relationship with them, right? This means he's had relationships in the past. He lied. Broken relationships. Nobody saw him down the pub. Innocent men don't lie. He only lies if he's got something to hide. Look, he's been hurt, right? The women he rapes are either women he's used to or the sorts of women that he aspires to, right? Whereas James, uh, don't take this personally by the way, aspires to nothing and nobody. The man's in an entity. This man gets letters from Reader's Digest saying that he has not been included in the draw. Besides, the man we're looking for can swim. Whereas... I'll bet you 20 quid the bugger drowns. Get a life Sorry about this, James. A uh, bit of medieval justice. If you drown, you're innocent. If you swim, you're guilty. Get him out. It's a bit catch you got him in there, really, isn't it? Get him out! Scottish Come on, Patrick, James, do something! Out. You're not your holiday. This guy drowns, it's down to you, all right? Swim. I'm not carrying no, on down to this guy. It's down to you. All right? Swim! 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 Swim, man! Swim! Swim! We were wrong about my life. I'm sorry. You've let him go? Yeah. Can I come in a minute? Yeah. Oh, really, my dear. Well, you will enjoy every moment, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to tell Mum about her? No! Are you doing this to make Mum jealous, aren't you? She can't be jealous if she doesn't know. It's not about making your mother jealous. Do you want Mum back? Most of the time, yeah. Well, so do I. If she comes back and finds Bo to see her here, she's gonna get off again, isn't she? I mean, you try to be nice. Just talk to 
at me for ages. He asked me about Tom. Asked me if he was the jealous type. And I, I was talking to some friend, you know, and he's in my name all the time. Catherine this, and it was, um, and then he said he was good and that if I didn't struggle, I'd enjoy it. We could leave it there for now. No, I want to carry on. You see, I, I don't think he, th he thought he'd rape me at all. In, in his mind, it wasn't rape. Have your circumstances changed since your last interview, Mr. Melvin? My bowels have improved a little bit. Now, have you done any work over the last two weeks, Mr. Malcolm? Yeah, man. Understood if you're swat, nigga. Next week, I'll be monkey back in. Where were you born, Mr. Malcolm? I born and raised in Liverpool. You speak with a Jamaican accent? Me like to speak like me from Jamaica. You need to start, please, I'm afraid we'll need to see your passport, Mr. Malcolm. We don't have a passport. And I'm going to have to terminate this interview and we'll start again just as soon as... We don't have a blue cloud passport and we need me money. Would you like to see a supervisor, Mr. Malcolm? I've seen them on Crime Watch. I've always thought they don't do any good, just titillate the audience. A reconstruction can jog someone's memory. Can I be there? I don't want you there. You're not up to it. It was three months ago. It's about time I started doing things on my own. That's okay. Whatever you want. When? Tomorrow? Right. Great. She's about 80 odd years of age and she walked into the station and she had like a few ginger whiskers. She had a few ginger whiskers. More mascara than Julian Clary. And her lipstick looks as though she'd been taken by Vina. And she said, excuse me, officer. She said, I've been raped. I said, oh, I'm sorry, madam. I said, but when did this happen? She said, 61 years ago. I said, I can't charge anyone with this rape with someone 61 years ago. She said, no, I don't want you to charge anyone. I just want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Junior bottom leaf. Can I ask you yes. something? You can, yes, go on. How come, how come he gets two drinks and we only get one? There's more of him. <laughs> no, no, I think it indicates something. It certainly does. You're soft for a bang minute. Yes, good luck! Good I think it indicates that you think you're something special. Oh, Jimmy, leave it out with you, lad. No, 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 Virginia Bottomley. There's something about that name, I'm telling you. In case you want to put it over your knee and give it a good spank, yeah. you know what I mean? I love you. You're <laughs> twisted. And you're the pervert. And you'll make a bloody good police. <laughs> Most rape victims don't even bother reporting it nowadays. Yeah, well, why do they let themselves be raped? Hang on a minute, Jimmy. They don't let themselves. Oh, bollocks. No way. It's violence or the threat of violence. Yeah, bollocks. Yeah. You can't thread a moving needle. What? You can't thread a moving needle. They allow themselves to be raped. Shall I tell you why? Yeah, please do. Because subconsciously, they want to. Bollocks, Jimmy. <laughs> Do you fantasize about rape? Hey, I, I, she, yeah, well, she does. It doesn't include violence, right? Stay out of this. Do you fantasize? No, excuse me. You're on my pitch here. I couldn't give a shit. Do you fantasize about it rape? It has nothing to do with violence. Do you fantasize about I rape? Mean, huh? Sometimes. Yes, I do. Excuse me. I had the smell of the barman's apron, have we, Jim? I just wanted her to answer the question. You all right? Do you think he should be on this case? Jimmy Beck? Don't you think we could find someone a bit more sensitive? <laughs> Attila the Hun, someone like that? You'd go off the case before the Beck, love. Thank you, sir. Go back in and have a drink with your mates. 
I'm really not in the mood. Them lads in here are your mates. Forget the feminists and the hairy ass lesbians. Go back and have a drink with your mates. Okay. We're always in hospital, sir. Pure pathetic bastard. Mr. Carter. Yeah? If it's up to me, I'll give you a medal. But it's not up to me. So would you mind coming down the station, please? <laughs> Andy for Robbins, flat 27, second floor, Belvale flat. Yeah, 43, Mike. I'm five minutes away. Anyone else? Anyone close to Belvale? I want this one, Mike. I'll be there in two, right? Okay, 43. Can you say that again, please? Are you okay, Helen? He's in intensive care. He's lying there like a cabbage. Oh, he can't be that bad if he's doing impressions. Bad taste. I'd say so. Ah, he's only a pervert. Yes. Doesn't really matter. He's been beaten up and left for dead, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't? No. Why don't you confess? If it doesn't really matter, why don't you confess? Because I didn't do it. I know you did it. And I know why you did it. You ask yourself, what would other men do? Kill the bastard. Something in here said you shouldn't do it. That it was barbaric. But you'd something to prove. Not your wife. Not yourself. But other men. Nothing to do with revenge. You didn't wait for the guy who actually did it. Hmm? Went out and picked in some innocent little pervert. And every punch you threw said, I am a man. I've been raped, my wife has been raped, but I am still a man. Sir, we're ready for you now. Yes? I didn't do it. <clears throat> if it was up to me, I'd give you a medal. Did you say that? No, boss. I don't believe it. The man is a criminal. He took the law into his own hands. No jury's going to convict him. He put a fellow he human cost. being no jury's gonna convict into him. hospital. A pervert, sir. Not a fellow human being. A human being. Now, would you like to wait in my office? I'll talk to you there. Wait in my office. Okay, everybody, Jane's in charge of this reconstruction. What's the girl's name? Helen Robbins. Helen Robbins has been raped. So a bit of sensitivity wouldn't do any harm. Okay. Take over. Right. Keep your opinions to yourself. You've already upset a fellow officer. Who? But now I'll keep your mouth shut. Who have I upset? It doesn't matter who you've upset. I'm sorry, sir, but it does. Someone's complained about me, yeah? Yep. Van Halligan? No. I don't believe you. Tough. DCI Bilbrecht would never allow this. A copper going behind her mate's back. I'm not. Bilbrecht. No, sir. Jimmy, don't push your luck. DCI Bilbrecht always encouraged us to speak our minds. Oh, piss off. Piss off! Sir.
Were you in this park three months ago, June the 12th? Okay. You sure? Right. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Right. Were you in this park three months ago, June the 12th? It's anything unusual in the park. Right, thanks. Right, right, thanks. Hurt you, you're right. Everything's fine. I'd sooner be the victim, you know, than a, than a husband of the victim. Her, her old man down, a friend has come around, you know, and offer condolences and, and, and say how sorry they are. No one says a blind thing to me. I'm not the one who's been hurt, aren't I? I am. I have been hurt. I know. What's my role? You know? What do I do? Do I, uh, do I take her in my arms and make love to her? Show her that nothing's changed? No, I can't, because... Because that's not making love anymore. That's doing just what that man's done. Do I avoid it? No, because, you know, that's... That's treating her like some kind of leper. That's admitting that he's one. That pervert's one. One? Yes. It's a strange choice of word. You think so? Yes. Then you don't know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're feeling. It isn't very nice. It's not very PC. I know what I'm feeling. Shall I come up with you? Please. Do you have anyone coming round? My boyfriend's coming round later. You could wait for him if you want. I'm fine. Are you sure? Every man I meet sounds like him. I keep hearing his voice. He's a cab driver today, a window cleaner yesterday. They, they all sound like him. Someone else to me feel guilty. The idea that your property's been tampered with, that some man's had his hands on what's yours, what's exclusively yours, it's not nice, it's not PC, but the idea is there. Something more to make you feel guilty. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's wholesome, natural. Now, something slightly less wholesome. You blame her. I don't. She should have been more careful. Why wasn't she more careful? I thought maybe she wanted it. She didn't scream, Tom. Why not? Maybe she wanted it. Did she? And here's the killer. What did he say to her? I promise you, you'll enjoy it. Did she? Hmm? I mean, we're talking rape here. We're talking about a man, Tom, who just does it. And then you think of all the times when we weren't up to it. When she was willing, when she helped, we still weren't up to it. And this man just comes along with his stick of Blackpool rock and does it. How do we measure to a man like that? How do you match a man like that? You can't. So what do you do? You just go out and beat somebody up. Is that why you did it? Is that why you beat up Malloy? Is it? I understand. A judge will understand. A jury will understand. Is that why you did it? Yes.
He wears a mask. There's nothing unusual about that. Lots of rapists wear a mask. But he tries to form a relationship with his victim. And that is unusual. A mask rapist would not normally do that. The mask just gets in the way. It's, uh, it's frightening. It's aggressive. Which suggests to me that there's something about this man's face. It's got... Yeah? So do you realize what you're saying, Dr. Fitzgerald, yeah? You tell me. If you hadn't spoken to the victims, you wouldn't know about the mask. And you wouldn't know he's scarred or deformed, that's right, yeah? Yes. So if I was this rapist, you'd advise me to kill my victims in the future, yeah? Fitz, I'm taking him off. I don't quite understand the question. Should the rapist kill his victims in the future? Forget morality, okay? Forget that. If he lets them live, there's more chance of him being caught. So should the rapist kill his victims in the future? Is that what you're advising? Our next caller is Jane from Eccles. No, it's not Jane from Eccles. It's Jane Eccles, actually. Jane Eccles from Salford. Now, I was wondering... Have you seen Penhaligan? No. Show me a man and I will show you a potential killer, a potential rapist. I am one, for goodness sake. I don't do anything about it myself, of course, because I'm frightened of other men, frightened of being caught, because I'm educated, because I'm the product of several thousand years of so-called civilization. But I think he's still inside me, the killer, the rapist, buried deep, growling occasionally just like the tomcat in the alley. Some music, I think. Rapist, you'd advise me to kill my victims in the future, yeah? Here. I needed a bath and a change of clothes, sir. What do you think you're that gorgeous bloody gussy? You don't just walk off the job because you want a bath. I left you in charge. I, um... I've been raped, sir. Drink or something? I've got one, thanks. You don't mind if I get one? No. It was the man we're looking for. 
An eye for hood, the same kind of mask. What are you going to do about it? I don't know, actually. I've got evidence under my nails. You've had a bath. I, I know you've protected your hand, but you've had a bath. I had to have a bath. I'm sorry, I know there's no logic to it. But I just had to have a bath. No, it's me, I'm sorry. Stroke of luck, isn't it, sir? That's not what I mean. Isn't it? We wanted him to rape again. I wanted him to rape again. But to slip up. To leave us something, and now we got exactly what we wanted. It's no good to us unless you repose it. You're going to report it. I've counselled 14 victims, so I've got to report it. Haven't I? Otherwise, I've given 14 women a heap of Bullshit. I don't think I can live with that. I want them back, today. That's impossible. You know that. I am not having a bunch of coppers going through my knickers. I want them back today or I walk out right now. I'll see what I can do. This is just... I know what it's for. I'm gonna burn that bra, are you? A bit 60s, isn't it? Although, personally, I'm greatly in favour of women's movements. I hate it when they doesn't lie there. I think your phone's off the hook. Hey, 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 hey. Get off me. Floyd. Sorry? My name's Floyd. Is it? Shall I get that mouth organ? We can do duets. What? Your feet hump. I'll be flipping beat you to the penicillin. God. How long have you been up? Why haven't you tidied up? Look at this. I was going to. Oh yeah, when? A bit. You know, Mark, you could be a member of the lost generation. The crisis of Western capitalism has robbed your work, ambition, motivation, self-esteem. 
Yes, that could well be the case. Although personally, Mark, personally, I think you're just a bona fide old jack. Doctor Fitzgerald. Yes. He wore a mask just like you described it today. Yeah. Anything else? You think I'm lying? No. You think I'm lying? Some kind of crank? You want me to come up with something I didn't hear on the radio? Something that fits? Yeah. He asked me my name. I said Bernadette. God knows where I got that from. But I said Bernadette. He wanted to know who was the first person I'd screwed. What it was like. He never stopped talking. And all the time he talked, he combed my hair. Then he dragged me into a stream, washed me. Does that fit? Yes. Yes. When was this? Two years ago, this December, December 17th. And you didn't report it? No. Say it. Say what? If I'd have reported it, you might have been caught. I'd have spared those other women all this pain. I wasn't thinking that. For two years, I haven't read the paper. I don't read the paper, I don't find out he's done it again in exactly the same way. I don't feel all this guilt, and then you come on the radio and it. Look, they'd have done nothing anyway. That's what I keep telling myself. I'm black, he's black. I report a rape. The coppers think I'm some prostitute who didn't get paid. Absolutely nothing to feel guilty about. Say so he was black? Yeah. He wore a mask? Yeah. Well, how do you know? The way he spoke. I'm telling you, he's white. He is black. And Halligan said he's white. She should know. Why? Well, why she put Halligan know? How can you wait? What? He raped them. to my throat. Then he went. Do you mind if I? Then he put the knife to my throat. Then he went like that. Then he must have pulled me or spun me round, I can't remember. But he started to back me up towards another wall. Why didn't you scream? the other wall, out the back of my head. I offered him money, said I had a disease. But there were people living there. Why didn't you just scream? <sighs> because I... <laughs> I was frightened. Ask you something. 
You told your boss he was white. Did you see enough of him to know? Yes. Look, we're gonna get this fella, love. Honestly, we're gonna get this guy, right? Right. What did he say? Nothing. He said absolutely nothing. Yeah. It's not the same man. What? It's not the same man. The man we're looking for is black. No, you, you said he was black, but you were wrong. He's black. Did he use water? Did he use water? Did he make you wash? No. Different M.O. Different man. You were raped by somebody else. You know this man. It's someone you know with a very distinctive voice. That's why he said nothing. You're talking a lot of bollocks. Hey, hey, that'll do. Take it on, come on, off you go. That's an order. You put your feet up, I'll be in touch. I come and see you. Passports cost money, yeah? You understand that much? I can't get no money with no passport. Passports cost money. Yara Ashworth, three. My birth certificate. Liverpool, England. Well, I'll need to check whether this is acceptable, Mr. Malcolm. Would you like to wait in room two, please? Why? I'm sorry, Mr. Malcolm. Why are you putting me in trap two, eh? We'd like to talk to you in private, Mr. Malcolm. Room two, please, Mr. Malcolm. Zara Ashworth, give me three. I'm giving you the chance to withdraw your claim. I'd advise you to take it. Why? You drive a minicab. Is who tell you that, eh? Who ever tell you that's a liar? It was a police officer. Eli Mann. I strongly advise you to withdraw your claim, Mr. Malcolm. I know where you live. Is that a threat, Mr. Malcolm? Mr. Malcolm! I want to be alone. <clears throat> Greta Garbo. Before my time. Then I come in. I blame you. I'm listening. You think it's someone I know? Yeah. Then he's seen me with you. Overweight, skint, drunk. Middle-aged. She'll go with them, she's anybody's. Yeah. Could get your white steak for when we're out together in public. It's that old devil displacement again. You're angry at the man who raped you and he's not here, so you're just venting your rage at the first man that's available. I'd like you to go now, please. Just go. Clench your fists. Why? 
trust me. Clench your fists. No. Please, just clench them. Clench them. Tightly. Concentrate. All your pain, all your anger is in those fists. Clench them tightly. Don't think of anything else but those fists. Tighter. 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 usually show my face but this time it will make no difference please let me go no please let me go no see that but this go. isn't down to you it's down to your husband the way he treats people <laughs> down to Soch Black people, people like me in particular. I've got to do it. I've got to hear your husband, and I'm sorry, but there's only one way I know of doing that. Leather. It feels bad. Hit the wall. I'm gonna catch this man. He does this. He's close. He's hurt you. He's hurt someone I care about deeply. I'm going to yes. catch this man, I promise you. Breathing on you? my head on the wall, back of my head, but he's still pushing me. He's very close. He smokes cigarettes. Drinks whiskey. He smokes cigarettes. Yeah. What else? There's another smell. From his clothes. From him. Him. Another glass drinks whiskey. It's not a young man. It's aftershave. 
aftershave. You remember this aftershave? Yes. You will remember the exact smell you are smelling now. You will remember this. You will remember this till we find this man, and we will find him, believe me. Dr. Grove, please, pal. I've got a train to catch. Car, please, sir. Lloyd Malcolm. Yeah. You've been seen on three occasions picking up fares from the public highway. That contravenes the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act of 1976. I'd like you to come to the station, please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Two police cars, three coppers. Haven't they got anything better to do? You're an hypocrite. I'm not a hypocrite. Tell me what he's done wrong. You're always on about the coppers, but our house got screwed and who phoned them right away? You? Okay. That's different. All he's done is pick up on the street. Floyd, will you eat your food? I should do what I do. Have nothing to do with them. Nothing whatsoever. Right? Right? If you can't be trusted. Wrong. There's people getting ripped. That's the point. People getting ripped and murdered. And what are the coppers doing? Arresting cab drivers are picking up on the streets. Floyd. Fitz. Took your advice. Who's speaking? Never mind who's speaking. You're the man from the radio. Yeah. Call to 19 Stevenage Drive, man. You'll see a woman in the bath. Will she charge me for a peek? No. She's dead. I took your advice, you see. I didn't give you any advice. You gave me advice, man! You gave me advice! So now she's dead, and it's down to you, because I took your advice! What do I get for raping all these women? Life, hopefully. What do I get for killing them? Answer my question, what do I get for killing them? Life. So now they're dying. They're dying, and it's down to you. It's down to you. You need if help. If you hadn't have shown off, if you hadn't have poked your nose in, I'd have just given them one and let them Did go. You rape but a woman in Belleville? No, you had to poke your nose in. So, so, so now. Did you dying. rape a woman yesterday in Belleville? No. You black. Andrew Wiley, can we come inside, please? Don't come in the bathroom, Don't come in the bathroom, please! Oh. Oh. Down to you, you know that, don't you? We're looking for a young Did black you have to man. go blabbing on the radio? 
Look at me, everyone. Look how clever I am. Look what a smart ass I am. We're dealing with human beings, for Christ's sake, and they've been hurt. One of them's been killed, haven't they? It means nothing to you, does it? Looking for a young black Look, why male. don't you just shut up for a minute? This means nothing to you. This is just some sort of intellectual game, is it? A chance to show off on the radio. Are you finished? You are. We're looking for a young black male. He's got his own transport, right? He's scarred. This is a dream come true. We oh, yeah? are? I pass a girl on her own. I clock the time. She might be dead five minutes later. The whole case hanging on my evidence. A speeding car, I clock the time. Take the number. Who knows? Was she murdered? Well, her death's suspicious. Oh, a dream come true. What kind do you use? No, just your standard. Oh. I suppose it can't be too big if you've got to carry it round. Oh, that's right, yeah. 10.46, a teenage girl delivering leaflets. 12.02, a white Vauxhall Cavalier, registration number EYK493K, cruises up and down the street. 2.15, uh, the window cleaners. Oh, I want a trial. I want him to have a shit-hot lawyer determined to break me down. Oh, no, Your Honour, I'm perfectly certain of the time. 100% certain. 2.45, a minicab, registration number TFR665X, cruises up and down the street. 4.20. When will they finish upstairs? Not till the morning, I don't know. I'll need to use the bathroom soon. Well, perhaps you could use next doors. Yeah. We'll have to sleep down here. Is there not somewhere else you could stay the night? My sister's... It's sick. Whoever did it, it's sick. Yes. Why can I... He didn't kill the others. Why can I... We're gonna get this man. We'll get him. <laughs> The boss died a while ago. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and, uh, well, I don't really fit in without him. You were fond of him? Yeah. See, I went to see a man with no hair. We were looking for men with no hair. And this man told me he had cancer. And. Because I felt sorry for him, I believed him. And he killed my boss. That must be terrible for you. Yeah. I showed a bit of compassion, you see. That was my big mistake. Because there's no place for it. Not in my job. Or not in my bloody world. And they all know. They all know it was down to me. She knows. She knows it was down to me. She thinks she can treat me like muck because it was down to me. But she'd have done the bloody same. Compassion. The job's full of it. It's full of, full of women. Full of rape counsellors, full of victim support counsellors. I, I just want to shout at them all, forget it. Forget the bloody compassion. Let's, let's just get back to the way things were. Because... Compassion only gets you killed. Have you spoken to her? Who? Your female colleague.
guy goes into a boozer, right? Guy goes into a boozer. Well, yeah, this boozer will be packed right now. Goes into this boozer, right? Uh, barman, give us a pint of, pint of lager. You should matter, yeah? Yeah. I think I'm going to need a drink. Right. Uh, pint of lager, uh, whiskey and vodka. Thank you. Hiya. Hello. <laughs> Oh. Tell him my dad. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, Fitz. Five months. I'll save you the arithmetic. It's yours. Good morning. Yeah. Is that your mini cab? Yeah. Well, it was seen at 2:45 on Stevenage Drive. Stevenage. Oh yeah. Um, Wilson Parry. Sorry. I shared with a guy called Wilson Parry. He had it then. Wilson Parry. Yeah. I'm Detective Constable Harriman. There was a minicab scene at 2.45 on Stevenage Drive. Me? Yeah. You drove up and down? Yeah. Huh? Why? I was looking for number 202. Couldn't find it. I blew in. It was Stevenage Road. Right. Thank you. No problem. Are you pleased? Yeah. Pleased about the baby or pleased that I've come back? Both. You think we're too old? You think I'm too old? No, I don't. No. I love you when you lie. You think your best quality is your honesty, it isn't. I love you when you're kind enough to lie. You bought a new double bed? Mm. I'll get rid of it. It's brand new. I'll get rid of the old one. No, let's keep the old one. Why? Why? Because it's where we made this baby. I'm never going to change you, Fitz. I've accepted that. But a baby might. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No smoking when I'm around. From now till the baby's born. Hmm. Stevenage Drive. 19 Stevenage Drive. I know where you live. What? No, a man said that to me yesterday. I know where you live. Can you remember his name? Hiya, I'm sorry to disturb you. I'm Detective Constable Harriman. Did you order a minicab yesterday? Mm, No. Did anyone from this address order a minicab? No. You sure? Positive. Right, thank you. Tango Force Control. You must get threatened all the time. I do, yeah. But this one was different. Yeah? I believed him. It's a young black guy. Floyd Malcolm. Floyd Malcolm? We had him in three days ago. From Floyd. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. We'll be in touch. Good luck. You know what this means? Fitz was right. And Algin was right by somebody else.
I grinned. He was so angry, you see, and I wanted the dad I knew. Not this angry man, and that's why I grinned. But that just made him madder. And he smacked me again. <laughs> and I cried then. Which is what I should have done in the first place, because he stopped then. Why am I telling you this? Because when that man was raping me, hurting me, I grinned. I did it to make him like me. So he wouldn't hurt me as much. But he just hurt me even more. And it made me think of my dad. And that time, he smacked my legs. Do you want me to respond to that? If you want to, yeah. My son didn't rape you. I know. The man who raped me was white. And why are you telling me that story? Because your son's raped other women. Did other women through that trauma? He hasn't. Sure? Yeah. Positive? Yes. Mrs. Malcolm, I could bring in a dozen rape victims. They would all have stories like that to tell. They would all reduce you to tears. Please tell us where he is. My son's innocent. So what have you got to fear? He's innocent, but he's not white. So being innocent isn't going to help. That's rubbish. It isn't. If your son's innocent, Mrs. Malcolm, I will prove that he's innocent. I promise that. If he's guilty, he's got to be caught before he rapes again, before he kills again. I lied. Why? Because he asked me to. Who? Floyd? Yeah. We're investigating three rapes and a murder. I didn't know that. Three rapes and a murder, and you're telling us a pack of lies. I didn't know it was a rape and murder. I'm innocent. What do you think? You haven't booked any holidays for next year, have you? No. Good. Because Floyd told me you were driving the cab. You told me yourself you were driving the cab. I lied. And that cab was seen outside a house where a woman was murdered by a young black man. What'll I do? About 25 years. I mean now. What do you want me to do right now? It can't be easy knowing that this... this monster came out of your womb. I'm sorry, did that hurt you? You're not sorry. Supposing I told you that monsters are not born, they're made, would that not hurt you even more? Yeah. Because who turns a child into a monster if not the person who has most influence on them? And who is that person? His mother. Yes. Every rapist, every killer in the world blames their mother, Mrs. Malcolm, and they're all talking bullshit. But that doesn't help, does it? No. You just still feel guilty. Yeah. Where's the scar? What scar? We think the man we're looking for has got a scar, which is why he wears a mask. Now, if Floyd hasn't got a scar, then he's not the man we're looking for. Well, that's good news, isn't it? No, oh, please. Don't toy with me. Pardon? You know he's scarred. Emotionally, of course. Not just emotionally. We 
Would you like Sergeant Mack to leave? Yeah, yeah, I would. Would you leave us, please, Jimmy? So where's this car? He got in a bath when he was nine. Scalded? Scalded, I could live with. Do you have kids? Two, yeah, boy and a girl. Both still at home? Yes. Your son wants to be like you? Right now he wants to kill me, actually, but yes, there was a time when he wanted to be like me. Floyd wanted to be like me. So he got into a bath of bleach when he was nine years old. I mean, your kid has an accident. It's bad enough. The guilt, the pain. But when your son locks himself in the bathroom and sits in bleach, deliberately sits in bleach, and you see what he's done to himself, and you're screaming at him, and he looks at you and he says, I want to be like you. I mean, can you imagine what? You've got a friend called Jerry, Gambia Road. Please, do you request? Right, right. Call Mark. Mark! He's busy. Look, you've gone far enough, Judith. You are pregnant. I'm OK. You are not. Fitz, I'm carrying the equivalent of a seven-pound penalty. I'm still at the bottom of the handicap, and you are still at the top. Where did you learn language like that? Hello. Hello. Can I speak to your dad, please? Someone from age concern. Hey. Hello? <laughs> it's Jane, isn't it? Yes. Would you like a drink? Yes. Yes? I can't find the woman outside Sainsbury's. She used to have a stall outside the hospital. She sold beautiful flowers. Thanks. She's not there now. Oh, she is. The hospital isn't. We've got Floyd. Right. Right. Um, i better get down to the station now. I'll wait in the car. Bye. Bye. You're mine, I've got to. You're screwing her. I was, yes. Mark knows. Yes. So it has been here, in our house, in, in that bed. In our house, Judith? You've been trying to bloody sell our house. Don't give me that crap, please. She's young. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Is her father still alive? No. Am I a father's substitute? Probably, yes. 
You get a four-eyed wanky therapist and I get a sex bomb. Is it fair? <laughs> definitely not. Is it going to last? Definitely not. Am I flattered? Positively, definitely, yes, yes, yes. Let me something out. Do you love her? I was going to tell you when the time was right. Get in. Yeah, no, you phoned me. Not me. No, you used a funny accent. Not me, mate. This is the Espen Halligan, BC Skelton. Sit down. I don't think you two are going to hit it off. No. I met your mother. Yeah. She's white. Yeah? She's white. So what? She's white. I was wrong about you. I thought you'd be scarred. You wear a mask, so obviously the mask's better than the face God gave you, but I was wrong. It's quite a nice face. Thank you. And it's black. You've noticed. Mm. Is that why you wear the mask? To cover up your black face? Look, what is all this about a mask? I don't wear one. <laughs> I recommend you should wear one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't need one, no. okay? I wasn't that far wrong, though. I mean, you are scarred. Yeah, you sat in the bath of bleach when you were a boy. It's a birthmark. You're lying. It's a birthmark. You're lying. Were well, the fat kids at your school? Fat boys, layers of white flesh. Hmm? Why didn't they pick on them? They were fat, they could die, they could do something about it, but not you. You were black, nothing you could do about the colour of your skin. You felt that. I know you felt that. Because I was that fat boy. I'd hear the black boy say it. Don't pick at me. Why didn't you pick on him? Pick on the fat boy. I know what it feels like. I know what that kind of pressure can lead to. It leads to boys like you getting into baths of bleach. God, I want revenge too. What kind of society is it that drives a wee boy into a bath of bleach? What kind of sin? Yeah? Stuart Parlour. Yeah? A young lad up front for Everson. No, no, he is. He hasn't got a nickname. He has. <coughs> Jigsaw. Go on. Go to pieces in the box. <laughs> Get off that horse. <laughs> the hell I will. Get off it before I break your neck! What's the problem? It's a present. Right? For Bilbra's baby. I didn't know. Hey, I had no idea. He's off his rocker. We'd like you to confess. We'll tell the judge you cooperated. And he'll let me off with a fine. Not quite. How does it feel to stalk someone? How would I know? Let's talk about him. He's out there stalking somebody. How does he feel? I haven't got a clue. Talking hypothetically, Floyd, what are you frightened of? No. Right, so he's out there stalking somebody. How does he feel? A bit of a commando, maybe. Balowitz. Yeah. Mm. He sees her. He's watching her, right? He thinks she's leading him on, teasing him. She wants it, really. And she's gonna get it, the little bitch. Stringing him along like that, eh? Possibly. Yeah. 
Why is he dead? He's black. Yeah. <clears throat> Why does he do it? You think he's letting the side down, yeah? Sit down. All that sucking up to your white friends. It's all wasted now, isn't it? Because a big black man's come along and raped their women. Sit down. What do you dread most, eh? You and every other white man. Your nice white wife getting raped by a big, and I mean a big, black man. It's a pile of crap. I know it. He knows it. But it's there, yeah, and it's there, right? And maybe, maybe, that's why he does it. So he rapes white women as some kind of revenge against white men? Possibly. Right. So he's homosexual? No. I got a patient, you see, Floyd. You can only make love to other men's wives. Single woman unattached, can't do it. Married women, well, bam, thank you, ma'am. Likes to do it in the other guy's sitting room, on the other guy's carpet. Likes to wash himself down afterwards in the other guy's bathroom. He's screwing the other guy. I'm not a queer. I was talking about you. You say he rapes white women as revenge against white men. There's a weak problem with that. He rapes a black woman too. He doesn't. Two years ago, Bernadette dragged her into the stream afterwards. Why would he do that? I don't know. I reckon he was just practicing, perfecting his technique. Possibly. You know what that tells me about him? He's a man who despises the colour of his own skin. Black woman means nothing to him. Just practice. Huh. White woman's the ultimate prize. No, see, that's what you think. That's what the police think. He raped black women because the police don't... don't bother if the victim's black. You're looking for a man who's proud of his colour. Women. What? You said black women. So Bernadette wasn't the only one, hmm? And you said a man who's proud of his colour? Yeah. Man like you? Yeah. Not me. Somebody like me. You always been proud to be black? Yes. Even when you sat in the bath of bleach? See, you've rationalised it now. It was racism, it was white society that put you in that bath. But at the time, at the time, Floyd, you poor, sad, pathetic bastard, you despise the colour of your own skin. And you can't forget it because of those scars, a permanent reminder. And who sees those scars? And this is the really sad bit, Floyd. Who sees those scars? Every woman you sleep with. Miss Ways. I'm Barbara Charles from Aldridge, Bevan and Charles. Yes. You're holding a client of mine, Floyd Malcolm? Yes. May I see him, please? Sorry, one more, please. <clears throat> Are you going to head them off at the pass? How did we find you? Hmm? Don't know. Your mother told us where you'd be. Yeah. Hmm. Wonder why she told us. Your sake? No? I know what you're thinking, Floyd. Look at me. Look at me. She told you because she's white! Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, she... This guy's raping white women, yeah, women like her. When it comes down to it, it's a colour. It's a colour even before her own son. It's a colour white. It's all falling into place now, isn't it? Hmm? You come home from school, the taunts, nigger, 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 still ringing in your ears, the bath of bleach is ready. And there's your mother, this white woman, pretending to love you. How can she love you when you despise yourself? She's a lying bitch, Floyd, a lying bitch. Is right! My client was at home at the time. Every member of his family backs that up. I mean, Wilson Parry has admitted driving the cab. Oh, which he's since denied. Tough. You have got no ID and no forensics, so what the hell are you doing holding my client? Would you like some tea? No. I would like to see my client. Wait till your father gets home. She's white, she can just twist him around a little finger. He gets home and she starts acting, performing. She's giving it everything she's got. And it's all to come to hit me. And he hits me. But 
But that's not enough now. She carries on, making what I've done ten times as bad. And it's all to get him to hit me again and again and again. It's like Floyd, I understand that anger. You understand nothing, man. You're white. I'm not looking at black man, Floyd. I'm looking at a killer. And I understand killers. I understand the rage that drives men to kill and to rape. Particularly to rape. We haven't told them. The husbands. We haven't told them we picked up a black man. We don't know what that'll do to them. But that's rather the point, isn't it, Floyd? You want them to know. That's why you've got to confess. They have to know. They have to know it was you. They have to know it was a black man that raped their wives to know that the myth has come true. That myth that we fostered for years, white men like me, it suddenly happened. Tell me you did it, Floyd. Your brief, sir, yeah? Brian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's a symbol, Jimmy. You to make sure Ryan sees the light. Support City, not United. Ryan, go in peace and the Lord be with you. Amen. I had him right on the point of confessing. You don't mess around with a lawyer like her. She'd already spoken to the chief. Two minutes. For God's sake. I had to let him go. He's ever so slightly wound up. We're watching him. Looks like David, doesn't he? The horse. Yeah. <laughs> He's the image of him. Does it help? Yeah. Katrina, there's something I've got to tell you. I miss him. I dream about him. That helps too. Angle for the control. I'll take the back alley. Angle for the control. I didn't know she was pregnant. It came as much of a shock to me as it did to you. I slept with her once in six months. I made a couple of dirty phone calls, mind you, but I'm discounting that. It doesn't matter. You're right when you say I'll do nothing. But I'll. I'll do nothing because I don't know what to do. I never meant to it hurt you. It doesn't matter for God's sake. Everything else pales into insignificance. Even you. I have been raped. said she dreams about him. I felt like saying I have nightmares, love. And then everyone is blaming me. He's bleeding to death and he's blaming me. He said, I want you to get the bastard, Jimmy. For me and Katrina, get the bastard.
Skelly, he's out. Tangle Force Control. We're following along Robson Street, towards Marchington Road. Donald! That's not him. It's not Floyd. Tangle Force Control. We've lost him. You followed the wrong man for a quarter of a bloody hour. Well, his clothes said they must have swapped him in the house. There you go, Miss Pillocks. You're walking bloody brain dumb. His minicab. What about it? He's not going to arrive without transport. Check his minicab. Don't you think we're checking it? You don't think we're all as thick as these two, do you? You think we've caught something off them? Any vehicle stolen today, Beck, I want to know about it, okay? Okay. And you? Did you speak to him? Who? The fellow you did follow. No, sir, no. Well, don't you think you should? Try and find out what clothes Floyd's wearing right now. Sir. Sir. Go on. Sir. Yes, sir. Previous victims. What about him? This guy's an organised rapist. He's not going to strike at random. He's not in the mood to stalk another victim. So what's left? Previous victims. Check that out as well, Jimmy. Okay. Anything else? Are you okay? Yes, sir. Anything else? <laughs> Gone upstairs for a bit. Play some music. What? Be responsible. Don't be cheeky. Are you accusing me of rape? I got into a bloody car. Are you accusing me of rape? Yes. For God's sake, we've worked together for years. I got into a car with a plastic bag around my wrist and you didn't even ask why. It's none of my business. You didn't ask why because you knew. It's none of my business. I said, Belle Vale, you drove straight there. How did you know the way? Well, I've been there before. You're lying. No, there's a rape victim living there. I've just checked with her. She never set eyes on you till the reconstruction in the park. Are you serious? Yes. You believe I could rape you? Yes, I do. All right. Let's have this out in front of the boss. Right, and then I'll take any test you like, DNA, whatever. But let's have this out in front of the boss. Right. Okay. For God's sake, woman. You wanted to see me, sir? Yeah, shut the door and sit yourself down. I've got the lab report. Yes? 
The slides are blank, every single one of them. I don't believe it. There's two explanations. One, there's been a mistake, and two, no rape took place. I was raped. Okay, then there's been a mistake. Who, who sent the swabs off? The exhibits officer. Was Jimmy Beck? Yeah. Look, Jimmy Beck's an experienced copper. He doesn't make mistakes with evidence. No, sir. So? Beck raped me, sir. I never heard that. Detective Sergeant Beck raped me, sir. You got evidence? He smokes, he drinks whiskey, he uses the right kind of aftershave, and he handled the slides. Oh, that's not evidence. He's destroyed the evidence. So this is like a wild allegation? No, sir, it's a fact. Get me some evidence, bring it to me, and I'll give you all the help I can. But I'd like you to sleep on it first. There's nothing to sleep on, sir. Oh, isn't there? You'd fancy life as a traffic warden, would you? I beg your pardon, sir. Jimmy Beck is well liked. You're making wild allegations against a bloody good copper. That's what they're gonna think. I can live with that. Oh, yeah, you can. But your mates can't. They're gonna be out there on their own with you. You might decide to scream rape again. Look, I know it's a load of bollocks, love. I know it is. But that's how they're gonna see it. You've done this to Jimmy Beck. You could do it to any one of them. Can you tell me exactly when you last saw him, sir? M A L C O L N. Floyd Malcolm. Right. You should remember him, sir. Yeah, the fight him six months ago. It ended up in court. I don't know he's going to rape again. That's just your guess. Look, he owns a mini cab and he's stolen a car. Why? Why? Because we're watching the mini cab. Exactly. He doesn't want us watching him because he's going to commit another crime, right? What is his speciality, sir? Confirmed sighting on Bradbrook Road. If it's not the previous victim, it'll be the wife of some man he's going to grudge against the white man. You okay? Hello? Oh, hi. Are you okay? Yes. Are you on your own? Oh, Mark's here. Why? I'm uh, just a bit worried about you, that's all. I'm not the first woman in history to be pregnant, Fitz. No. I'll see you later. Look, we've got to talk. Yeah, I know that. Bye. Bye. What's wrong? Nothing. Where are you going? That again, please, sir. So this distance we've seen in the crime seven miles. Right, nine miles to the He's abandoned the escort. Uh, Charlotte Road torched it. Transport is where? Charlotte Road. That's my road. For my wife.
Do you have something? <sighs> Take the mask off. Take the mask off, you... You raise your voice and you're dead, man. Take your hands off me. Get out of my house right now. Who is she who must be open? Get out of my house. Rich middle class white little bitch. <laughs> Used to get in her own way. Ah. And here's some uppity little nigger. Well, she'll soon put him in his place, won't she? Let me go. Your husband. Yeah, yes. He writes books, doesn't he? Yes. I know. I've seen them. Books about people like me. Yes! <laughs> Why are you hurt me? It's nothing personal. For God's sake. It's your husband I want to hurt. Oh, <laughs> What do you want, Floyd? You'll write about me one day, won't you? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll be a little chapter in one of your books. An interesting little case. Something for white middle-class bastards like you to study. I'm not middle-class. What well, I'm here now. I'm not a chapter no more. I'm the real thing, man. What do you want, Floyd? We're leaving. No, you're not. If you don't let me go, I'll kill her. Kill her. For God's sake, Vic. Go on. We've been married 20 odd years. I'm sick of it. Go on. Kill her. Stop it. I wish to death umpteen times. Never done anything about it myself, of course. I was thought of an accident, you know, maybe a car. You're but lying, man. Something like that, you know. I dreamt about it. Of course, what I should have said is, Judith, it's finished, but. Uh, you're lying. <sighs> it's the most surprise you never had any of that, Floyd. So go ahead, kill her. Really? Go on, kill her. Quickly. Before my son smacks. <laughs> Police. Put it down. Put it down. On your back. On your back. Suck it. Don't speak with your mouth full. Suck it. Smile. Smile.
Yes. Who is this, please? Jane Penhaligon. I need to speak to you. 